Here it is, part two of the Foresight MK1S review. Price point for this is $1,100 US. Sounds like a lot of first, but don't forget it is a carbon fiber helmet, Bluetooth audio with Harman Kardon audio speakers, and some cool internal light LEDs for directions. A kind of like heads up display. Now getting something like this with all those features would normally cost you way much more. Yeah, but all this for $1,100. Now I've been using this helmet for a few weeks now, and I wanna let you know my thoughts. But before we go on, I wanna show you the helmet I mostly use. My Arai Defiant. Now this helmet has been a staple for me. I use it basically all the time. And I've installed a Bluetooth device, the Senna 10S. Now this is actually one of two Arai helmets that I own. Besides this Defiant, I also own the Defiant X. Both which I installed Bluetooth devices. Now as you've seen in most of my videos, I am a big fan of Arai. So although they don't make the Arai Defiance anymore, whether it be the Defiant or Defiant X, on average, Arai helmets, I'd say around $700, which means throwing on a Bluetooth on average around like two to $300, you're looking at a budget around $900 to $1,000, depending on which Bluetooth device you get. And that's for a fiberglass shell, not a carbon fiber shell and no camera. So if you were to combine all those different aspects into one helmet with Arai, you're gonna be spending way more than $1,100. So I've been really happy with both of these helmets. Both have their purposes for me. If I'm just riding around town like on a daily basis, most likely gonna use my Arai. But if I'm riding around town and I wanna get some good footage, definitely using the Foresight. So I don't wanna get too much into comparison which helmet is better than the other, because honestly, each serves a different purpose. So let's focus more on the Foresight today. So let's start from the top and work our way down. Beginning with airflow. Pretty good airflow. You got one, two, three, four intakes and two exhaust ports on the sides of the helmet and one big old one in the back. A pretty decent shield with one, two, three positions, a fairly comfortable liner, a pretty tight neck curtain to help make it quieter, it's carbon fiber, and the LED heads up light indicators. And let's not forget about the 1080p camera that can go at 60 frames per second. So what are the things I like about this helmet? To be honest with you, I was really surprised at how quiet it was, considering it is carbon fiber. Now I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the neck curtain is so narrow and it's pretty firm on the neck so that helps keep the wind noise out. And although it doesn't have the same like brow air vents that you would find in a Rye, I found the airflow pretty decent. <clears throat> now I'm sure you want to know my thoughts on the camera. Now the camera itself I thought did a really good job. I mean it's not at 4K but at 1080p, I think the quality is still good. A big reason for that is that if you put it in 60 frames per second, it just makes it look a lot smoother. Now, I wish it did have some sort of image stabilization, but I was still happy at the results. Now, in terms of sound and audio, the speakers work fantastic. Now, in terms of audio with video recording, if you checked out the first part of this video, the sound quality wasn't actually too bad, especially considering I was running around New York City in a motorcycle a little over five years and just made it into the US market. Now these little LED like turn light indicator things, which connect to ways, I found really helpful with directions. That way I'm not like looking down at my phone to see where I'm going. Those little like indicators helped with, uh, you know, telling me where to go. What is this? Now I know there are helmets out there with like a heads up display and you have all these, you know, things flying around your face, but I found this not too distracting. So that way you can focus on your ride. In addition, I do like how sleek that looks. Look, I mean, this has everything in it. Bluetooth, camera, it's all nice and sleek looking. Versus my Arai helmet, which I love. It's just a little, you know, here's my Bluetooth. It's a little, you know, breaks the line. Not as clean looking. And not to mention, if you throw on a GoPro right out front, you're gonna have all of these things sticking off your helmet. I mean, I think the other day I saw a guy with an Insta360 pole stuck on the top of his helmet. Hey, no judgment. So one thing I will say, because there's no image stabilization in the camera, I had to be really careful with my shots. If you notice in the videos, anytime I made like a quick head check or look around, it's, you know, it's like you're on a roller coaster. So which means if I'm gonna be taking some specific shots, I gotta be careful with my head turns. Nice and slow and easy, see? And if you're wondering where the SD card goes, it goes right here. Here's a closer look. This is your USB charging port and data transfer. And that's where you put the SD card. And this nicely seals with this little waterproof closure. And yes, this slot can take a terabyte SD card, which is a ton of footage. Yeah, I will say I did find it really convenient in terms of when I'm getting ready to go out and shoot videos because you just pick this helmet up and you go. And the battery life was actually pretty decent with Waze running, with audio running, with the camera running. I definitely got like a couple of hours, maybe two to three hours. Now I have yet to take it on a really super long ride, 
but when I do, I'll let you know the results. So here are some things that I found as challenges with this helmet. Although you're getting a lot for what you're paying for, one thing I found is like, even with these air vents, these buttons are kind of tiny. Even with my fingers, it's kind of hard to push them. They're not as easy to manipulate. Now imagine doing that with gloves, but it, it wasn't that big of a deal. Same goes for this front forehead air vent. I'm really putting quite a bit of force on there. And then to open and close these front mouth vents, you got to go internally and kind of rub the inside. Not rub. You got to slide the controls for the air vents internally, which are on the opposite side here. Kind of similar to my Defiant X. So that's a little inconvenient. And although this neck curtain is really nice and snug to help with wind noise, I will admit this thing is really... Uh, it takes a lot to put it on. And even when taking it off, uh, I feel like I'm being born. So it is a really, really, really snug fit, which is not necessarily a bad thing, because as I always say, any helmet that's easy on is a helmet that's easy off. And you don't want that, especially in an accident. Now, once the helmet is on, the liner is, it, it's all right. I mean, if I were to compare it to my Arai, which is an extremely comfortable helmet, I wouldn't say it's night and day, but wearing my Arai helmet is like wearing a pillow. Now, in terms of Bluetooth communications, unlike my Arai with the Senna 10S, this is not really a true Bluetooth in that sense. If you want to communicate via making phone calls straight to your phone, no problem. Sound quality is good, both when speaking and when hearing your phone calls. The one thing I didn't like is it doesn't traditionally connect to other Bluetooth audio devices out there. Meaning if you have a friend who has a Senna or a Cardo, the only way that can happen is if you download the Discord app. And not only you, but everyone you're riding with also has to download the Discord app. Once you're all connected via Discord, then audio is fine. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, it also comes with this little controller that goes on your handlebars. It's kind of a quick access to controlling the helmet. Basic power on, pick up a phone call, turn on the camera. But for my needs, I didn't really use it too much, to be honest. I mean, I get it. It's just to help keep those slim lines on the helmet. Because if you notice, there are no controls on the sides of this helmet like you would find traditionally on other Bluetooth devices that go onto a helmet. And that's just to retain its sleek look. So for me personally, these are the only like challenges. Beyond that, I think it's a fantastic helmet, especially for what you're getting at this price point. $1,100? How can you beat that? Once again, you get a carbon fiber helmet, Bluetooth audio with awesome speakers, 1080p camera at 60 frames per second, and these cool LED light features. So who do I think this helmet is good for? I think this helmet is the perfect choice for someone who wants video, great audio, carbon fiber, and cool light indicator gadget thingies. It's definitely a good helmet for someone who's doing some motorcycle vlogging. I mean, if you're in a quick rush and you just want to grab your helmet and go, this is a great choice. This is also a very good helmet for those of you who want to record your track sessions. And although there's a ton of great cameras out there that can record from different angles, like the Insta360, the camera here right by the chin gives you a really cool perspective of your track session. In addition, if you're concerned about your safety and having the ability to record whatever's happening around you, this is a good choice. It's like those cameras you find in cars. You know, God forbid you get in an accident, you'll have some good video proof to help you out. And if you're the type of person who likes to record your track sessions, because it's also ECE 22.05 approved, not to mention it's also DOT approved and FMVSS certified. So if you're the type of rider that's looking for a great bang for their buck with cool gizmos and gadgets, cameras, audio, and carbon fiber, I think you should pick up one of these Foresight helmets today, the MK1S. Or if you're the type of person that wants a camera for safety or just videoing your adventures, you should get one of these. So I know these just broke into the US market, but if you have one right now, let me know in your comments below. I'd like to know how you feel and what are your experiences with this helmet. And if you haven't seen the first part of this video, it should be popping up over here. And if you wanna learn more about Arai helmets, check out the video over here. If you wanna get your hands on one of these helmets, especially here in the United States, I'll leave a link below. Until next time, guys, I'll see ya.